From the Coco Key. We're here. We are. We're ready to go ashore, have some fun. First, we gotta get some breakfast. I think I'm gonna get a chicken sandwich today. I've heard this island has mystical chicken sandwiches, and I'm ready to try one. For breakfast? No, that's how we looked. Well, you know, I would eat it three meals a day. They don't open could. yet. You can't have one yet. Sorry. <sighs> burst my bubble. So breakfast, <laughs> yes. hop off the ship. I think we're just keeping it simple today. I'm just going to take the GoPro, not even taking this camera ashore. So GoPro mode. We're going to go hang out with some friends. Yeah. Free and frugal. But we'll show you all the things that you can do. Well, most of them for yeah. free. Get in some water time because <laughs> we did hideaway beach. I keep saying the wrong word. Last cruise. So if you haven't checked out that video and you want to know what it's about, maybe it's down here in the link in the description. It's I don't somewhere. Know. <laughs> yeah, I'll find it. <laughs> Let's go. Alright. I think we will just head down to the Pearl. We got mueslis and sandwiches and coffee and goodness. Down the escalator. I like how they can change this for every port. So back on board 430. There are the trams which can transport you down the, the side, pier. The other side. Y'all remember that time I accused Mariner of being in port with us and it was actually <laughs> Oasis? Mariner is finally in port with us today. You're not wrong. I am not. There we can see both ships back there. The balloon is flying. The tunes are bumping. It's going to be a perfect day. Hello, Chill Island. Well, quite a few folks there in the old protected lagoon. Well, the straw market booths are open. Get all them deals. I think we'll station ourselves near the wacky seagull today. Hop in some water. Well, there's a ton of spare chairs if you go maybe four rows off the beach. So I think we'll just post up here. Got EECC joining us today. So boom, here we go. Let's test. Oh yeah, okay. It's refreshing. I see fish already though. Now, I do feel very safe being out here with you and your Baywatch swimsuit on, so you could just come rescue me. Quit it. It's just, not a Baywatch Just come swimming, th <laughs> running through the sand. <laughs> swimming through the sand. I'd like to see that. Yeah, I do not have the body for that, but hey, oh, that's all right. Oh, hey now. <laughs> Let's have a Coco Key spin. So the air is only supposed to get up to the low 70s Fahrenheit today. <laughs> the water, don't know. It's brisk. 22. Now I'm not wearing, <laughs> I don't know what it is, I'm not wearing my sunglasses out here today because I was in charge of packing the bag this morning and Dee did not double check me. And as you may know from watching our recent videos, we've forgotten how to beach. I did not pack her sunglasses. I packed mine, but I'm going to stand in solidarity oh and God. not wear mine today because I did not pack your sunglasses. So. I don't need them, I'm snorkeling. This feels like, I, I told her earlier, where are you back there? I'm right here. Oh, there you are. I, said, I um, don't need them, I'm snorkeling. <laughs> but it feels like the me from like, I don't know, five years ago <laughs> where it was black t-shirt in the ocean, no sunglasses. Yeah. We forgot how to come to the Caribbean. Oh my Bahamas. gosh, help. Yeah. I think the moral of the story is don't let me prepare for things. Don't. Just don't. don't. Just don't. Don't be it. I'm not allowed to be the responsible party. <laughs> You found a little biggie. That seems kind of like oxymoronic. Is that the word? The opposite of what you would feel? Isn't it oxymoronic? Don't you think? The water is super clear. It's so shallow today. I'm not usually able to walk out this far past this uh, break over here. So we've got some kind of low tide situation going on. Oh, the fish army has found us. We came over to this other little area. <laughs> Sergeant Majors and Palometos. All right, I'm backing off. I'm backing off. <laughs> I don't know what's happening out here. All the vlogging is very exciting. Gonna, let me go under with this first. Don't get me going under with the shot. Okay. He's got that Insta360 out here. Go under with this. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go on a walk-in snorkel adventure because I am on the far side of these rocks right now, which is a place I don't go that often. We're on the hunt for D's out here, so if you see one, oh, there she is with her. May watch just bay their own. Oh, there's some palomettas. All right. Hello. 
to see some new friends out here. Oh, he's reporting a barracuda. All right, and of course you can explore this little grassy area out here by the platforms. Parrotfish. Oh, the big. Okay. Okay. Jason has been tasked with going out to the platform and capturing a dive on the 360. All them fancy shots, I tell you. <laughs> we just had a biggie sighting. It's always a good day when you see He's biggie so here. Cute. He's really big though. <laughs> it's probably a different fish from when we saw him. No, actually. it's the same biggie from 2020. He's so cute. He loves to hang out him. around this cove though. Very large. <laughs> And we've convinced Elisa to come out here. Jason's been using the 360 to look at fish. Dee is out here catching all this grassy parrot fish action. Y'all, it is quite the vlogging day in Coco Key. Oh, I could see Biggie from here above the water. All right, he's getting all them good shots. Yeah, if you can get out to this grassy area, this is a really, a really good zone for fish. Oh, the sun's come out? Y'all, this is a perfect day in Coco Key. I know that doesn't rhyme, but it's technically correct. Time to head ashore. Well, there is the buffet. We have returned to land mode. I, you know, we're, we're definitely in snack shack mode today. Yeah, you have to now. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> Oh, the grilled vegetable salad, of course, adding chicken. It's so good. You got your mozzarella sticks. We got lots of colorful essenced water. I got the chicken sandwich. This should be no surprise. Mozzarella sticks with extra sauce because yes. <laughs> I should give me a giant chicken today. That's a lot of surface area. Ooh. Well, we've had a delightful little concert from some folks using their Bluetooth speaker here at the Snack Shack, whether we like the tunes or not. But let's move from their tunes to some other tunes. We're headed to the pool. Let's test out this water. Okay, we've got a woo, that's cold. Hey, woo, that's cold. Definitely colder than the ocean water. This is why you pay for Hideaway Bay if you're an adult, because it's a heated pool. So on cold days, it is worth it. Yep. But this is nice too, it's refreshing. Let's potty. Woo. Ah. It is kind of empty over here, really. I'm thinking the, nice. the yeah. pool temperature has kept people out of the water. Oh, oh, <laughs> Y'all, this is like, it stings you when it touches you. I don't know what temperature this is. Zero. Put ice cubes in here. Though. It's zero degrees right now. All right, we'll be fine. It's all right. Do they have coffee at the bar? Hot no. toddies? <laughs> Mold cider? Hot tea? Glue vine? Anything we can get like that? We have grabbed a couple of watermelon margs. That's our go-to here. 
You found a nice little ledge. In the sun. Yeah, the, the thing I like about this though is when you're at the bar, the music is like boom, 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 boom. You come around the corner and it's like half the volume. Yeah. It's very pleasant. Very good. Actually, we're coming over here to this little nook that we found when we were here on Freedom. It's, it's so even nice. further from the tunes and that much more relaxing. Cheers. Yeah, it feels remarkably uncrowded over here, even with two sizable ships in port. I know with Hideaway being open, that's creating some competition, you know, to draw people away. A lot of the adults are over there. And then with it being the first sailing of Icon, a lot of people stayed on the ship to experience the things on a less crowded day. And it's cold, so some people may have just decided not to get off at all. <laughs> yeah, when they saw that the weather was going to be like 71 or something yeah. at the high, they probably thought, nope, they it's know nice. February in the Bahamas. <laughs> Time to head back to land mode. Oh, it's after three o'clock and they have shut down the ice cream machine. We have missed out on that customary cone. That's all right. Do you know what I'm saying? Welcome home. Coco Key. Well, back on board time has come for both vessels. I'm not sure who's leaving first, but they've been making lots of announcements. Sounds like they might be coming from Mariner, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks like Mariner's ropes are officially dropping. I believe they are back in Florida tomorrow, just like we are. Well, now we got nice views of Coco, now that they got out of the way. <laughs> Good evening! It's dinner time. It is. Like, actually, right now the dining room is open, so we're gonna go eat it. We'll talk to you. How was your quick Coco recap? It was amazing. Snorkeling was perfect. There was yeah. no waves. It was very shallow. I saw all kinds of fish. The pool was freezing cold. The food was good. We had such fun with friends. It was a great day. Nice. Perfect day, in fact. And I had a chicken sandwich. There you go. Let's go eat dinner. Let's do it. Come on. Welcome to dining room. just got done with dinner. Apparently we are missing show time, but it was really fast. For us, it is go time. Everywhere we go. They do have an aqua show coming up later this evening. We are here for some rye and bean excitement. Oh, and apparently a little sunset at the Overlook excitement. Dee has gone espresso martini. I got something called carajillo, which I had not tried until now, actually. It's straight up cold brew coffee and this liqueur 43, which is a liquor that I had never heard of made in Cartagena, Spain. It's quite delicious. One thing that we've noticed that's interesting about the themed bars on this ship is that not every bar has every alcohol. There was a gentleman who came up to Ryan Bean just now asking for scotch. 
they don't carry scotch because there are no drinks involving scotch on their menu. And we've noticed certain bars are really only focused on rum. Certain bars are only focused on tequila. So every bar is not a multi-purpose bar on here necessarily. There are a few that only have a very limited selection of liquors. Well, we've come into the theater now. It is Wizard of Oz time. We are gonna sit up here in the balcony. Oh yeah, check these little seats out. Yeah, check out the view from here. That'll be nice actually from up here in the balcony. Can't record it, but we're gonna enjoy it. <laughs> Due to copyright reasons, we also ask that you refrain from taking photographs or filming this performance. Thank you. We have come back to the cabin to find our souvenir photo of Icon of the Seas with the date Maiden Voyage. Good, Good night. night. It is still night. We have not stayed up past midnight. No, because we have packing to do and oh. things like that. <laughs> now, how many of us have started packing yet? Zero. I have some packing cubes I didn't super unpack. Doesn't so it's count. not that bad. Doesn't it, count. It counts. Nope. It's fine. Nope. Well, I left some stuff in my suitcase, so. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, this might be the first time neither of us has packed until mm -hmm. the end of the night. Well, it was a port day, which That's is always true. hard. So, like, when you're off the ship and don't get back on until dinner time, you don't have time. So. I missed that last sea day yeah. type of thing. <laughs> but I love some cocoa. Yeah. Uh, really, I guess all we have to talk about is the show. So, mm -hmm. The Wizard of Oz, which we saw again but could not record. Right. Exactly. Um, seeing it from up top, I enjoyed it again. I think I enjoyed it more seeing it from the floor. Yeah, so a tip would be there's a lot of aerial things happening mm -hmm. and flying over the audience. Don't sit too close to the no, stage, but front. maybe also don't sit ex like way, way, way in the back because then you can kind of see some of the magic happening. Like oh, it, down in the pit. Yeah, sometimes. like the pit and how it works. And that kind of takes away from it. So is it like in the middle or the sides on either like the stadium seating or like down on the floor? Yeah. Yeah. Still good. It's, it's an amazing <laughs> show. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, let's dig in again. <laughs> then we got to get packing and look at the shower and whatever we're doing. Oh, here's creepy lighting. <laughs> you had the tapas plate, I believe. Mm -hmm. It was like Mediterranean with hummus, tzatziki, pita bread, and like um, Greek salad. It was excellent. All the flavors mm -hmm. were really good. Nice. You didn't eat those purple things on your Greek salad. I hate red onions, <laughs> truth be told. <laughs> I had the asparagus. It was five pieces of asparagus. It had something called a white bean hummus under it, which was a loose little sauce. Little um, arugula, I think that is, on top. It tasted like asparagus. It was cooked well. Yum, yum. <laughs> I also am the only one who got a second appetizer, yeah. which was the seafood cake. Now, I was full after that asparagus, let me <laughs> tell you. Mmm, them five asparagus. Um, seafood cake, actually really good texture. Big punch-you-in-the-face seafood flavor, which I always like. I don't have any complaints about that seafood cake. That's good. Yeah, really. Uh, moving on your entree, what did you get? Lamb. lamb. It was the chef's suggestion. It was lamb with like a bean ragu, potatoes, and like or spinach. It was okay. good. Like, it had a lot of flavor. Um, it's cooked well. I just don't know. Something about it was like slightly off, but that could just mm. be some flavor that I didn't really like. Lamb. I don't know. They also Maybe. brought you mint jelly to go with it, but that was not in the Yeah. Picture. I had the salmon. It was pecan. No, it's pecan crusted salmon. Okay, it's pecan. <laughs> pecan. Um, really good, actually. It was a little spicy. The mm -hmm. potatoes underneath it were spicy. Now, when I ordered it, she or when she was presenting the menu, it was recommended, and she said it was going to be yeah, spicy. Yeah, they do tell you. It was pretty excellent, though. <laughs> Cooked well, low spice. P -p -p I would order that again. Actually, I might. You had warm apple cobbler. Apples. Yep, that's oh, me. Pff, surprise. It, it was really good. Vanilla ice cream with it. The it was warm and actually Apple. it was piping hot. Really. Yeah, the it steam was really good. Came busting out. <laughs> And I had the, I forget if it was called a dark chocolate brownie. It was something of like those words, but it was a brownie, had whipped cream on it, popcorn on it, caramel. I enjoyed it. Um, she brought me some ice cream on the side, but really enjoyed it. Nice chocolate flavor. It was really sweet. So if you like a sweet chocolate dessert, get that. Yeah. And I would, so. I just have to say the service in the dining room was excellent. We had an amazing team, Giselle and Glenn, and they oh, yeah. were perfect. Like, they understood your wants before you even had them like your glass was filled immediately oh and yeah. suggestions and talking about your day and things like that it's really nice to see the iconic, the iconic way and how it's working with like the interactions that's true so now packing and bed we probably <laughs> won't get a chance to talk in the morning because um demarcation is early it starts at 6 30. Yeah, 
here. And we're going to try to get off probably in the 7 o'clock hour because mm -hmm. we are jumping directly to another ship. We do that. More on that <laughs> soon. But we got to hop back off, um, get the car from Safe Cruise Parking, and... Yeah. On, our, on to the next adventure. So we'll come back with some kind of a wrap-up or do a separate wrap-up video or something, and that's it for now. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us on this iconic adventure. Yes. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> And now it's time for In the Shower with Jay, Icon of the Seas edition. I'm excited to get into this one. Not literally, but let's look in it. So this overall is a pretty thoughtful unit. It's got the glass door, which is sort of hinged. Now, I don't know if this is true, but a fellow guest actually said that the reason the hinge is here, or at least something that's convenient about it, is so that when you open this door, you can reach through this crack to turn your water on without having to get in. Is that actually a function? Because I've been doing that ever since the person told me that. Anyway, let's open the door fully. Now the space in here is nice. Okay, ignore the shadows. It starts out wide. It does get a little narrower, but it goes back to like a full on seat. And you've got a full ledge all the way down here. Uh, can we see through? Hey, let's close the door like this. So we've got our um, on off is to the left, the temperature control to the right, shower head moves up and down and does detach. No, no uh, well it does have little twisty things, you can kind of change some of the water settings. All in one sort of shampoo body wash, we've got a couple of snack shelves, I always like having multiple snacks in the shower of course. Let's open the door again, a grab bar there I guess. Uh, twisting this way, we've got the two hooks in the back of the shower, and of course they do store the towels up by the ceiling. So that's kind of the gist of it. So now we are in the shower with the door closed. So there is lots of side to side room. The shower's over here and the towels are over here. Um, the front back room is pretty good. Normally when you're doing your wishy wishies, you know, I'm, you'd be up here by the shower head and you've got some bibble room. The further you back back, the narrower it gets. And for me personally, it, you know, it gets a little pinchy. But that's just me. Ceiling height is good. I mean, I've got probably six to eight inches above my head. I'm 6'5". I like it. Let's get out of it. So here we go, let's dig into the spreadsheet. The only negative I can think is that there is no clothesline, and a clothesline is very important to me for drying bathing suits. But anyway, so minus a little bit for no clothesline. Booyah! Good morning, they scare. I think we'll just do a little park cafe for breakfast since we live right here. Washi wa oh, they still never got that one open. Weird, because it was open during the preview. Anyway, Psh. yeah, we're done with breakfast. I've got balloon drops set up for the next cruise already. Anyway, debarkation is here on five. We have made it through customs and immigration, and now we are gonna get picked up. Safe cruise parking will be here at Bay 7. Gosh, all we did was cross the street. We ran right into the gentleman who slapped our sticker on us. I mean, it was the same sticker that we got. And here we go. Good gracious, that could not have been easier. Okay, here they are. <laughs> and let's load our luggage in the back. All aboard. ticket validated that's your last step and then that's gonna allow us out of the garage so we're good to go record time everything was smooth lovely and it's a great option if you're coming to miami for affordable parking and convenience yeah can't beat it all right let's roll Hello. Hey, uh, we are back with the final thoughts just as we said we might be we've had some time to reflect we and have. really think about it a little bit since we've been off the ship for a little bit now yeah, yeah. happening to you from the future we do that frequently but you saw most of our pros and cons <laughs> over the course of the series i think we talked about goods we talked about bad so i guess we'll just touch on a few highlights final thoughts and all of that so let's talk about some goods what are favorite things about the ship okay so when you walk in, one of my very favorite things is how wide the promenade is. Oh, yeah. It makes for such 
easy like getting from here to there and then there's also the two levels mm -hmm. so you don't have that crowd control issue that you would have on a lot of other ships with like little areas you can't get they through. stick that shopping out on the other ships. yeah it yeah. causes traffic jams you don't really get that on here now no. i guess the downside of that is some of those upstairs venues feel a little small true but not like absurdly smaller than other venues yeah. i've seen around ships but mm -hmm. i was pleasantly surprised about how open it felt mm -hmm. um it just made it so much easier and i didn't feel like claustrophobic like you tend to do on a lot of cruise ships yeah yeah so Embarkation that was a huge day. plus you hop on and you're just like oh this is amazing <laughs> but it's so cramped yeah you don't really get that feeling no. that's true what about you um entertainment overall yeah the ice show was pretty spectacular the aqua show you can see it developing mm -hmm. i mean it was already good but it's developing into something great and of course wizard of oz is a classic yeah when they don't have technical difficulties it comes off really right. well there's a lot of tech stuff going on lots there. of rigging in that so yeah. expect that they could but it is nice that they're able to kind of shuffle it around and get you in there at a later date Maybe don't book the last show, just in case. Yeah, though. book early. <laughs> book early in your week so you can get rescheduled. Just in case. Yeah. Yeah. Any other? Let's just random other positives that come to mind. Oh, um, just the neighborhood concept. You know, they've had those oh, yeah. before on the Oasis class, but it's really immersive, especially on this ship for some mm. reason. You know, they did a great job with the theming and all the different areas. Like the Surfside family is Especially. really, really geared towards those younger children. It's fantastic. They could literally spend all day out there and not get bored. It's mm -hmm. just, it's a great area. They do activities in there. Um, and then they've got like the thrill and the chill, just like at Coco Key would have with the water park. Central Park is still beautiful like it always That's is. Always. I love it at night. That's like my favorite time. Um, the sweet neighborhood we didn't get to see too much, but what I saw was really nice and new for Royal Caribbean, so that's a huge plus if you decide to spend the bucks on that. Yeah, so uh, the sweet neighborhood, I mean, the neighborhood, yeah, and <laughs> the all the theming is really, really good. Yeah, Surfside, especially for the younger children, I feel like Thrill Island kind of has the teenagers under mm -hmm. control. We did talk to somebody else and they said that the sort of mid-tweens uh, didn't really find a place to fit in. Surfside felt too young for them and yeah. Thrill Island felt a little too old, but there's Adventure Ocean and other mm -hmm. things. But great ship, I think, especially for families with young and young youngins definitely have all those things for them yeah oh yeah and surfside especially being that you've got restaurants right out there you've got drinks right out there it's kind of like an all-in-one it's everything you need mm -hmm. really right there in surfside absolutely they really thought about it yeah any other extreme positives before we just no there's not even a whole oh, lot gosh. of negatives really is the funny thing um, it's, i mean it's, just the amount of swimming pools and hot uh, tubs that they have are good i do think they could use a couple more like hot tubs honestly uh, just for the amount of people because people love like hot tubs for some reason. And a swim not, up bar. We're not big on those. Um, they need more swim up bars, bigger <laughs> ones. No, I think I think it's really cool and to spread people out. You know, everybody's used to having that middle pool where you all gather, mm -hmm. and it's you kind of miss that a little bit for like the activities. But they do have the little stage off to the side. Yeah, the split level Lido deck. You can hear it, but you may not be able to see the activity unless you're up there in the middle of it. It was interesting yeah. finding our way around from like 15 to half of 16 to mm -hmm. half of 17, and finding the paths sometimes was challenging. But <laughs> it's a fun concept. Oh no, it is. I think they did a good job. You can't really have like a true traditional sail away party though true. you know with everybody involved speaking but, of that deck you know what they don't seem to oh, have yes. outdoor movie screen that is true that is something i miss a lot of people I don't know. care about don't. that but movies on deck is just one of the coolest things on cruising for me personally i don't do it all the time but when i do i really enjoy it mm -hmm. they don't have that which is kind of missing so. yeah but they do movies up in the big theater so yeah. they do have movies they do um the only weird thing of course that i kept pointing out was exiting the ice show through playmakers when the game was on was painful now there are those side exits that say royal promenade they spit you out to the outside on the walking track so be prepared to go either outside or through playmakers mm -hmm. i didn't find any other paths there yeah it was just let our goods flow into our bads. Yeah, this yeah, is just all comments at this you know, point. We're just going off of yeah. what we're saying. Um, another good is the new venues. Love the jazz music yes. and dueling pianos. However, because they are new, they are so mm -hmm. popular. So go early or don't expect to get a seat. Um, especially at dueling pianos. Yeah, like go between sets or like right at the beginning because they're totally worth seeing. It's amazing. So much fun. Um, but oh. the venues could be a little bit bigger. Oh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. It would be hard to do though. <laughs> mm -hmm. But overall, now, see, so you know, a little bit, I kind of went into this whole Icon of the Seas experience expecting to be overwhelmed Same. and think it was just way too much. And I did not find that. Now, granted, our sailing had at least 2,000 less people 
than you normally would get because it was capacity controlled. So think about that. That's all. It's like 2,800, I think. Less. Oh gosh, you're That's right. That's the equivalent of an entire other smallish cruise ship of people that could still be on that ship. So we can't really give it a fair evaluation if it's full. Yeah. It won't be that way probably until summer when school's out. Summer and then I'm curious to see how it works, you know, with all the new stuff. Yeah, true. But, uh, and the other thing that we always kept talking about is it's difficult to find a quiet area to just chill and chat on the ship. Everywhere seems to have yeah. music playing to some degree. Other than the overlook up front in the Aqua Dome, but even still, there's some music up there too most times. Yeah, and at times it can get a little overwhelming just to even try and have a conversation because the mm. music is so loud. And I know they're going for that, like, you're on vacation, yeah. fun, fun environment, but there are times where it's okay to just be like, Chill out. Uh, a little more mellow. Calm down. At least that's what I prefer. <laughs> yeah, but so many goods. I mean, 1400 bar was amazing. Oh my gosh. Like you said, jazz club. Love it. Yeah. Uh, Too many good venues to I mention. Know. I want to say Icon probably flew up toward the top list of my royal ships. As much as I didn't think it was going to, it did. It's like top three. I don't know. For me. Yeah. So our only really big main mm. negative, and it's the same for both of us, uh -huh. is the pricing. Oh yeah. It is an amazing ship. It's glorious. The shows are incredible. The staff was outstanding. The food was great. But is it that much better to pay almost three times more no. that you would pay on like the Oasis class ships, for instance? It's not. <laughs> We didn't pay that much because I got a really great deal when I booked it. I would not personally book it at the current rate. Me neither. It's so expensive, especially if you're trying to gear it towards families with lots of people. Like, that is so pricey, and some people yeah. are willing to pay it, obviously. You have to make that decision for yourself, but I, I don't know. <laughs> Love the ship, hate the price. That's where it's I'm at crazy right now. And some of the things that ended up being upcharges, like Base Camp, which was not originally going to be, the Crown's, Crown's Edge, Edge, which was originally not going to be. Yeah. Stuff like that. So it's all about them dollars. It is. And I mean, they're going to pay for that ship in no time yeah. at this rate. Selling all them golden chalices. I'm sure they will. Good <laughs> gracious. Oh, and Rover. Rover is oh, so cute. That's one of their positives. That's too. true. Yeah. Yeah, we babbled long yeah. enough. So hopefully you enjoyed Icon of the Seas through our eyes, even though it was not quite the 100% experience. True. Um, if you have not already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Become a Paromaniac today. Socialize all our media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Yep, and until next time. Rock, rock on. on.